welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing an extremely different kind of video and if you clicked on this video because you think that I'm going to be like revealing slash talking crap about ABC sorority, you can watch this but you'll be very disappointed. So that's not what I'm here to do. Um, but I just kind of wanted to walk you guys through my sorority experience and some things that I noticed that were not as I thought they were going to be and some things that were exactly how I thought they were going to be. So I'm just going to show you guys, not showing you anything, I'm just going to tell you guys exactly what my experience was like. And if you're going through recruitment or you've already gone through recruitment or you're already in a sorority, some of this stuff may like ring true for you and some of this stuff may not. But from what I've gathered from my sorority experience and other girls from other chapters that I've talked to, this is pretty much accurate. So let me know in the comments below if you are in a sorority or were in a sorority or anything and this is like super true to you or if this is like totally like not how you experienced the sorority life. So please let me know, but I'm gonna get into it and tell you guys exactly how my sorority experience. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is, I remember we have this thing in my school called Blast Off where you go and this is before recruitment and you meet people from every single club on campus, which obviously includes sorority and fraternities. Um, and you get to talk to them and everything, like ask questions. And I remember asking about the time commitment and I was told, you know, like it's really not that much time commitment, like it's just an hour for chapter like every week and then like things here and there. Um, and I guess it can be that for you if you want it to be, but unless you have kind of extenuating circumstances, it's not gonna be like that. Um, it's a lot of work. Being in a sorority is a lot of work. Like if someone tells you it's not, then they are not really that involved most likely because I wasn't even like in an official executive position or anything and it took a ton of time because obviously you want to invest a ton of time into this organization like you're paying however much money your chapter costs um, to be in it so you want to make it the best that it's going to be so an hour a week I wouldn't say is an accurate representation and if that's all you want to get out of it then an hour a week will be fine for you. But if you're actually even like remotely interested in what you're doing or what happens in your chapter, an hour a week is just not really going to work for you. So that was the first thing that was different from what I thought. I don't think that I thought it was going to take an hour, but I really didn't expect for it to take as long as it did every week, like as much effort as it did. However, I noticed at the end of my like collegiate experience, I felt like I had done a lot and I felt like I had been really involved and a lot of people who only did attend a chapter and nothing else like really didn't feel that way and kind of noted that at the end of the year that like they felt disconnected or they didn't really feel like they got out of it what they wanted. Well you got to put a little more time into it if you want that experience. So if you're going into it thinking you're only going to put an hour in, good luck with that. Very possible but it's not going to be worthwhile. So first thing I'm going to say. So the second thing that I was wrong slash right about is I thought that everyone in sorority were all best friends. That is not true at all. So obviously a sorority is kind of like a second family but like I'm not absolutely best friends with every single person in my family. Like there's 80 girls in my chapter and it was a small chapter so there are people that I don't see every day or I don't talk to every day or I don't get along with and like that's not a bad thing but that's gonna happen no matter what. Like in any group of girls, in any group of people, you're not going to get along with every single person. So if you ask them during recruitment, you know, are you close to everyone? I don't know why you'd ask that because obviously like some personalities really don't click. But if you ask that, they're going to say, you know, yeah, like I could go call anyone if I needed them, which is true. I did feel that way, but there were people I probably wouldn't call and that is okay. That's like totally normal and people think it's not. People think it's not normal that you're not close to every single person in your sorority, but are you absolute best friends, see them every day with every single person in your family? Probably not. So if you're going into it expecting to be absolutely inseparable with every single person, you're probably going to be disappointed, but you will find like really, really, really good core friends. You obviously have to try just like you have to try to find friends anywhere else. I mean, people think that you're buying friends, but that is not true, believe me, um, <laughs> because if you don't put in the effort to have friends in a sorority, you're not going to have friends because people can tell that you're just kind of there to put it on a resume. So if you do that, 
you're probably not going to get a lot out of this experience. But if you go into it thinking like, I really want to find really good friends, I want to find people that are going to be there for me and that I can be there for, like you're going to really have an easy time because these are all just people, you know, they want someone genuine that's going to be there for them or that's going to be someone they can do stuff with and identify with and, you know, have a good time with its college, like you want to have fun. But don't go into it thinking you're getting along with every single person. That's a lot of people to get along with. And don't go into it thinking that you're just going to buy your friends because you have to be a good friend to get friends even in a sorority. Okay, the third like myth that I would say that I thought was true was that every single girl in a sorority was like blonde hair, blue eyed, like size two, um, which there are definitely sororities like that, don't get me wrong, but that really makes sororities sound extremely shallow. And while I'm sure there are some out there that are, a majority of the ones that I've ever talked to are not. Like they're not purposely trying to recruit blonde hair, blue eyed girls. Like a lot of sororities, every single one I know of anyway, has gone out of their way to make sure that they find people that they click with. That's the most important is that they're people that, you know, they're gonna get along with and they're gonna find really good friendships with because that's what's most important and that might not be that type of girl. Like if you watch TV, obviously the thing you see most are all these like cookie cutter girls, but that is not like the real world. That is not real world sorority life. Um, obviously even in our chapter, there was a group of girls that did look like that and like wearing letters and, you know, doing, really girly things like that was their thing that was my thing but that's not everyone and like in our chapter we had sporty girls and theater girls and girly girls and you know just like every different kind of girl and we all still mixed pretty well because I don't know if you know this you should but not everyone has to be the exact same to be friends so I went into it thinking it was going to be that way and I'm really glad it wasn't because I'm not sure how much I would have liked that because I do like being around people that are not exactly like me. Otherwise, it could get a little boring. So don't go into it thinking that like if you're a little different or if you don't feel like you fit the cookie cutter idea of a sorority girl that you're not gonna get in because that is absolutely not true, you're gonna find where you should be. And let me tell you, almost no sorority on our campus, all of them were exactly alike. Like that didn't happen. There were tons of different girls in every single chapter, no matter what house you were in, no matter, you know, what sorority you're in, there was different kinds of girls. So I'm not just speaking for mine. So if you don't think that you're gonna fit in, like look harder because believe me, it is not like, so the next and probably one of the last things I'm gonna touch on is big little relationships. So everyone thinks that your big is gonna be your best friend and your big and little are gonna spend each other, like spend all the time together in the world. And like, maybe that's true. And some people do click that way. And some people meet each other and they're just inseparable and it's perfect. And it's like a godsend relationship, but most likely that's not gonna happen because we're still people and people still get in arguments. People still don't get along. Like I'll just give a personal example and she knows that this happens too and happened. So she's not gonna be offended about this. Hi Katie. So my big and I, were like carbon copies of each other, literally the exact same person, but pretty much throughout most of our collegiate experience, we weren't that close. Like we hung out and we did stuff together occasionally, but we weren't like really, really, really good friends. Um, I'm not really sure why that was. I think we were both just really busy and had different ideas of what was important to us and like different priorities at the time. So we just didn't really make time for each other. And I did not think that's how it was gonna be, but I also really didn't, I don't know, it didn't bother me that much because I'm kind of like, someone that does their own thing anyway, but that was not how I expected the big little relationship to be. And then she graduated college and I became like a senior in college. And let me tell you, we are absolute best friends now, like insanely close. She's one of my bridesmaids. So if you'd have asked me when I joined and after I got her as my big, like a few months later, if I thought she was gonna be one, I probably would have said no, just because we really didn't see each other all that often. And that's okay, like people are different but we both matured a lot during like the time that we spent apart from each other after she graduated and then we kind of like rekindled our relationship and now we are such amazing friends and I would not give up that relationship for anything in the world, but has it started? That's not how I thought it would end. So don't go into it thinking that you're gonna be absolute and several best friends with your big or your little, cause you may not be but you may be later down the road. So don't get discouraged if it's hard at first because sometimes things just don't work out and that's okay too. If you and your little or you and your big just don't get along, like it's really not do or die. Like 
it'll be okay. And down the road, you may end up being best friends with them. So don't let it get you down and don't let everyone make you think that that's like the most important thing in the world because at the end of the day, it's really not. And some people just don't get along and they get placed together and that's really okay because you have however many other sisters to be best friends with or any other person at school and that relationship like doesn't have to define you. So please don't go into it thinking that that's how it has to be. However, if it does click for you that way right off the bat, like congratulations because that doesn't always happen. So, but you do have to put effort into it, but don't go into it thinking that it's gonna be a certain way because you literally So the don't. last and probably, that it's looking at me, and probably most important thing I'm gonna talk about is the stereotype that the Greek community only parties. I'm not gonna say that there are people in the Greek community that that isn't their only priority because there definitely are people that that's the reason they joined, the organization they joined. However, that is not something that I find extremely common. It wasn't any way at my school. I'm speaking only for the people that I met, but very few of them said, I joined this sorority or this fraternity to party and that's it. One, it's a lot of money to pay just to party. Like if you wanted to do that, probably joining the Greek system was not your best idea because that's a lot of money to shell out just to go party with people. So a lot of people and especially the media like to portray the Greek community as all they do is party and that could not be farther from the truth. I mean, I'm not gonna say they don't party. At the same time, like we get so much done that people don't even see and that they don't recognize. So obviously the main point of every single Greek organization is that they have a philanthropy. So obviously um, every philanthropy is different for every sorority and fraternity, but each organization has a philanthropy that they raise money for and that they support. And if you ask any person in that sorority or fraternity, they could tell you like however many facts about that. And they could tell you exactly like resources, everything. I mean, people in these organizations, like this isn't just kind of something that they like halfway know about. Like it's a really big deal, at least for people at my school and from what my experience was, um, supporting that philanthropy was like number one and supporting each other was number one. So obviously partying was like really not up there. It was something that happened, but if your heart was not in the philanthropy and if your heart was not in being like sisters with the people in your organization, it was extremely noticed and you probably weren't gonna get much out of that experience. Um, it's a really big deal that people know that that's not the main thing that people join Greek communities for because it starts to make us look really, really bad and it starts to basically like dumb us down to think that people would join an organization just to do that. And if you really look into the root of what sororities do like every single day or every month like they raise so much money and so much awareness and are some of the biggest supporters of so many different organizations across like the united states like ours was domestic violence awareness and there's like breast cancer awareness there's ronald mcdonald house there's like all different kind of stuff and these girls put in so much time and effort and guys put in so much time and effort to make sure that they're supporting these philanthropies appropriately and to boil it down to joining a Greek system to party is really, really, really kind of like cheapening it. So before you kind of make that assumption, really look into numbers like Google, just like how much sororities and fraternities raise for philanthropies yearly and you will be shocked because it is so not played up in- the Okay, so I was still talking and my camera cut me off, but you got the gist of it. Basically, there's a lot more to Greek organizations than partying. I'm gonna finish it at that so you guys don't get bored. But, so I just wanted to kind of shed some light on the Greek community and what it's really like to be in a sorority. It's a whole lot more than partying and it's a whole lot more than you think it's gonna be at the beginning. But it was an amazing experience for me personally. It was a lot of work and it was a lot of dedication, but I got like half my bridesmaids out of it and some of my very best friends and I wouldn't give that up for anything in the world. Obviously, it's not exactly cheap and it's not gonna be easy, but I'm telling you, like anything else in the world, things that are not easy are usually the most worth doing. So if you're thinking about going through recruitment or if you already are in a sorority, like please like let me know what your experience is or what you've experienced so far because for me it was such an amazing time in my life that I like wish I could get back. And so I just kind of wanted to show you guys and like shed some light on how it really is because I don't want you to go into a blind thinking it's going to be one way and it's not that way. But 
let me tell you, it is gonna be so, so worth it if you're about to go through recruitment and deciding to join, like it is extremely, extremely worth it. However, know what you're getting into. But anyway, I'm gonna be releasing a new video tomorrow on New Year's about like resolutions and everything like that. So keep an eye out for that. And thank you guys for joining me. Sorry, this was kind of scattered. Um, it's hard to talk about this kind of stuff because everyone is gonna have an opinion. So you just try and give everyone, you know, like your straight opinion and your experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like and comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow.